Hi there, I'm Jessica and welcome to my channel. In today's video tutorial, we're going to be making the Diana Crossbody. I am going to pronounce this name of the company and I'm so sorry if I butcher it, but it's, um, it's made by We Neck Studio. Oh, so sorry about that. It's L-E-E-N-E-K. I'll leave a link down below, but this came out so cute. This is actually my tester version. It's made out of cork. I did do the binding option on the flap. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. It has a pocket on the front with this magnetic snap for the flap. And then you have a zipper pocket with a hideaway zipper pocket down here. Very cute. And then you have this opening with two, excuse me, with two slit pockets. And then on the back side, you have another magnetic pocket. So pockets everywhere. This is the version that we do in the video. This is made from waterproof canvas. I did not do the binding option. Um, this one came out so good. I love the interior. I love how this came together. It's got the hideaway pocket in that as well. This big opening with these slip pockets and then the back pocket. This is a very nice size bag. Um, I do prefer to use cotton weight for the lining. Uh, that's what I did on this version. On this version I used Fairtex and I thought that it was just a little bit too thick. Um, this is also kind of heavy. Um, I was a little surprised about the weight of this with the cork and also Fairtex so it's just Keep that in mind when deciding what material you'd like to use here. I used a waterproof canvas, like I said, and then cotton weight on the inside, and it is much lighter. And then I added this really fun um, rainbow metal strap to it. It looks really pretty. I love the way that it looks. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started in making the Diana crossbody. All right, so let's go ahead and go over the exterior pieces for the Diana crossbody. You're gonna have two pieces for the flap. Okay, so I'm gonna be using this waterproof canvas. This is different from any other waterproof canvas I have ever used before. Um, it's got this backing that's some kind of coating. Um, I'm not really sure what it is exactly, but it's, it's a lot thicker than your typical waterproof canvas. It feels really nice. It feels like there's a lot of structure here. Um, so I thought this would be perfect to give a try for this bag. Um, I will not be doing the binding option on this one, um, just because I've done it on the first one and I really wanna see what it looks like um, without the binding. So. For flap A, you will need your pattern piece um, in order to place your magnetic snap. So keep that handy. Pattern piece B1 is your gusset. You will have two pieces for this. And again, because I have this structured waterproof canvas, I will not be interfacing this. So two pieces for that. You're gonna need four cuts for your outer slip pocket. You've got two pieces of your exterior, and then you're gonna have two pieces for your lining. The lining that I'm using is a waterproof cotton. So it's not as thin as your typical cotton. It kind of feels like, I would say it feels like canvas, um, but I will not be interfacing that. It feels pretty nice. I've made this before in linings on bags previously. I really like the way that it feels and the structure that this gives in my bag. I've got pattern piece D. You have two cuts for this. It's your exterior top. Pattern piece E. There is one piece for your large lining top. Pattern piece F, this is your small lining top and you'll have one cut for that. Pattern piece I, your small slip pocket binding, just one piece for that one. 
your D ring connector for pattern piece G. There are two pieces for this one. And then pattern piece H is for your key leash. I really like that feature in bags. You can just attach your keys and not worry about losing those. Now for all of our lining pieces, you're gonna need one piece for pattern piece K. This is your large lining piece. I love this print, it is one of my favorites from Mormino. You'll have two cuts, excuse me, one cut. Is it two cut? No, hold on, let me see. No, one, <laughs> sorry. One cut for pattern piece L, which is your small lining piece. And then you've got your small slip pocket, which is pattern piece M. I've got this folded in half right now. Your zipper pocket for pattern piece N, you'll have two cuts for this. Pattern piece O, which is your outer slip pocket backing. There are two pieces for this one. And then your hidden zipper pocket, pattern piece P. There are two pieces for that. And then I'm doing something different for the lining bottom. I am actually gonna be using the waterproof canvas for the exterior for my lining bottom, your pattern piece Q. And I'm doing that because I thought it would be fun to put some contrast in there. Um, and also this, since it is a little structured, I thought it would be great to use on the bottom. So let's give it a try and we'll see what happens. I have two zippers. I have a really long one. This one is longer than what the pattern states. And I did that because I wanted to make sure that I'm able to place my zipper on as easily as I can. Um, I want to, um, so with this, we will have the zipper pulled apart for construction. You won't be putting it together until the very end. So if you're not comfortable with pulling this piece apart, I would definitely make sure that you have it as long as you're comfortable with so that you have leeway to put in that zipper pull at the end. Um, you could always practice putting that zipper on and off before you start, before you peel this apart if you want. It's totally up to you, but just keep in mind that this will be separated for construction. And then you're gonna have a smaller one. This is for your hidden pocket. I'm using number five zipper tape, so I'll be using number five zipper pulls. I have, um, I don't know if you can see that, but just a generic little zipper pull down here. And then I've got a rose for that top zipper that I'll be using. And then I've got some magnetic snaps and then I've got my rivet tools um, to place those on the bag. I will be using a chain for this bag. These are really fun to do. Um, they look really nice as well. So I'll be doing that. So since I'm using this, I will not be needing an adjuster um, slider. And then I will not be using the swivel hooks because they're already attached on the chain here. And then you'll need one of these zipper ends for that top zipper that we were, I was just talking about, you'll definitely want to close that up. And if you don't have these, it's not a problem. You can always take fabric and make a zipper tab, totally up to you. And then you'll need a half inch swivel hook. This is gonna be for that key leash. And then you're gonna need two triangle rings or D rings. You could use rectangle rings if you prefer to, it's up to you on that one. And then you're gonna need, you know, your clips, your scissors, uh, rulers, and any of that generic things that you would typically use when you're making a bag. All right, guys, so now that we've gone over all of our beautiful pieces, let's go ahead and get started. I wanted to mention that this bag has the option to do a birthing method, or if you prefer, you could do a drop-in method. Um, I will be doing the birthing method uh, just because I don't mind doing the birthing method and um, it's, it's totally 
personal preference. So if you'd like to do the birthing method or the drop-in method, just make sure you follow along in the instructions. It does tell you where and what you need to do when you um, are doing the um, construction for drop-in methods. So just make sure you pay attention to that in the pattern. In the pattern, it requires that you have 18 millimeter um, magnetic snaps or 14 millimeter magnetic snaps. I only have the 14 millimeter and I did only use those sizes for my previous bag and it worked out just fine. So just wanna let you know that 14 millimeter for both snaps will work just fine or if you'd rather use 18 millimeter, whatever you have, it will work out just fine. The first thing we're gonna do is work on our flap. I'm gonna go ahead and set one of these to the side because we only need one right now. If you are using directional fabric, you wanna take the one piece that is has the print going the wrong way when the curved side is towards you, so this way. So if your print is upside down, this is the pattern piece you wanna use. But since I'm using the same fabric for both of my pieces, we will just go on with this one. So what we're gonna do is you wanna make sure that you mark the top center on that straight edge, okay? Since this is waterproof canvas, when I just um, made this mark, what happened is it made a white line right here. I don't know if you can see that, but I can see that, but there is a white line. That's really cool, I really like that. Um, you will need your pattern piece. I'm gonna flip this so that you see the wrong side of it. I'm going to place this on top. This bottom mark is number one. This one is for the 18 millimeter magnet. However, I will be using a 14 millimeter. It works just as fine. So you'll want to line up your pieces and you're going to make a mark here and you're going to install your magnetic snap here. I believe it's gonna be the, um, I believe it's going to be the male part of the magnet in here. Let me check. Yeah, so we're gonna install magnet number one and it's gonna be the male end, okay? I will be using a rivet press to install my magnetic snaps because I have the ones that have the rivets. I don't know if you can see that, but I have the rivet ends. I don't have the magnets with the prongs. So if you are using the magnets with the prongs, you wanna go ahead and follow the instructions. Um, but for mine, I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera since I'm gonna be using the rivet press. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and install my magnetic snap off camera. So go ahead and install the male end, which is number one on the rounded edge of your flap. All right, so I went ahead and installed the male end of the magnetic snap on number one on the bottom of the exterior flap. And I accidentally jumped ahead and forgot to fill in this other part where you're gonna take the other flap, okay, and you're gonna lay that right side up and you're gonna take this pattern piece and lay this down so that this top hole at this very top edge, that's going to be your number two magnetic placement. So you'll wanna go ahead and use this template to make the hole for your number two snap, this will be the female snap, on your other flap on the exterior where that top straight edge is going to be, okay? So go ahead and install that magnetic snap on your other exterior flap. If you are doing binding, this is where you're going to place your flap wrong sides together, okay? And you are going to sew around all four edges, okay, for the binding um, step. But I'm not doing the binding, so I'm going to take my flap, I'm gonna place it right side up and then right side down on top of one another, so right sides are together. And then we are going to sew down all three sides. We are leaving the top straight edge unsewn, so do not sew this top flat edge if you are coming along with me for the flap. All right, let's go ahead to the machine and sew down our three edges. Okay, so I've sewn my flaps together, right sides together. 
Um, I think I may have forgotten to mention that I did put some stabilizer here for um, my magnetic snaps just to give it a little bit more, um, I don't know what the right word is, structure, I guess, um, so that it doesn't come apart with time. So before I flip this over right side out, we are going to trim down. I'm going to trim down all of this. Um, with some pinking shears. Okay, so definitely make sure you trim around at least where your curves are so that your seams lay flat. All right, let's go ahead and take care of that. Um, after you do that, you're gonna flip this right side out and then you're gonna go ahead and top stitch all around your edge, okay? This is only for the flap that is not binded, okay? Okay, so right now our flap should be done unless you're doing the binding option. Um, you'll want to go ahead and do your binding and follow instructions on that. But on my flap on this side, I've got my male snap all right on the bottom. And then when you flip it over, you have your female snap on the top flat edge. Make sure that you have your center marks marked here because this is going to help you later on with placement. So right now, we're gonna go ahead and set this to the side. This is kind of wrinkled, but I will iron it um, in a little bit. So right now, go ahead and grab your outer slip pocket C and go ahead and set this one to the side. You wanna go ahead and have that pattern piece as well because you need it for the markings of your magnet. You'll need one of your exterior for right now. Okay, you wanna go ahead and also Mark your centers on the bottom of your exterior pieces. So go ahead and do that if you haven't done so already. And I'm also gonna go ahead and mark the center on the top pieces as well. I'm just gonna cut little snips on the bottom and on the top. Okay, so I've got my center pieces, the center marked on both of my exterior pieces on the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of those. And I'm gonna grab my pattern piece. And this is where you're going to make the placement for number one. Don't do number two just yet. On here you've got number one down here and number two up here. We're doing number one down here. So take your pattern piece and go ahead and make your mark where number one is. This is where we're going to place the female end. So this is number one. So I went ahead and marked on here, it says number one, female. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and set this to the side because I'm done with this. So I'm going to, off camera, go ahead and place my female end on here. And I'm also gonna have a piece of stabilizer that I have for some extra security on that snap. So go ahead and install your female magnetic snap for number one, okay? And that again, is gonna be on your outer slip pocket exterior. All right, that looks pretty good. I've got my female snap already installed. Now what we're gonna do is grab one of your lining pieces, okay? And we're going to take that and place it so that they are now right sides together. I'm gonna clip the top edge and we're gonna go ahead and sew this top edge here, okay, at the seam allowance given in the pattern. And then we're gonna come back and flip it so that they're wrong sides together. And then we're going to sew along all three edges. So go ahead now and sew that top edge only at the seam allowance given in the pattern. All right, so now we've got those pieces sewn together on the top edge. Let's go ahead and place these so they are now wrong sides together. I will be rolling the seams up here on that top edge and I'm gonna clip as I go. I'm gonna try my best to make sure that my lining is not showing at the top and if it is, it's not a big deal. All right, so I've got that top edge clipped together now, okay? So now what you wanna do is, if it's up to you, I will go ahead and clip 
my edges here just to keep them nice and taut um, while I am sewing the edges together. Okay, so now you'll go to your machine and we're going to top stitch on that top straight edge. And then you're going to baste all three of your edges together, okay? And it's okay if you have some overhanging, we can trim that at the end. Um, just go ahead and baste it together. All right, so we've got that top edge top stitched and then we've got all three edges basted all together. So right now we can set this to the side. Now go ahead and grab your exterior and lining pieces for the other part of pattern piece C. I've already marked my centers on the top and the bottom of my exterior. Now what we need to do is mark that center on the top and the bottom of your lining pieces. Okay, so we are gonna be placing the magnet on our lining side now, okay? This is going to be the um, male end of your magnetic snap, I believe. Yes, it's the male end. So go ahead and grab your pattern piece. I'm gonna place this so that it's wrong side up. We are gonna be marking number two. Okay, number two is the one from that top edge, okay? So let's go ahead and place our pattern piece right on top, making sure that center is lining up with the center of your pattern piece and your lining. I'm gonna grab my marking tool and go ahead and make that mark. I will go to the rivet press and go ahead and install that magnetic snap onto our slip pocket panel lining piece. Okay, so go ahead and do that. All right, so I installed that male magnetic snap here on that lining piece. I did add some woven interfacing on this piece because we were adding this magnetic snap on here and I wanna make sure this piece has the stability it needs for that magnetic snap. And then, and then I added that Peltex here for extra stability for that snap. So now we're gonna go ahead and grab our exterior piece and lay them so that they're right sides together. We're gonna to do the exact same thing we did to the other piece. Clip that top edge. We're gonna sew the top edge together. And then afterwards, we're going to flip it so that they are wrong sides together. Top stitch that top edge and baste around all three edges. So let's go to the machine and take care of that. Just be careful not to hit that magnetic snap. So if you need to, go ahead and switch your foot to a zipper foot. All right, the top edge is now sewn together. So we're gonna go ahead and place these so they are wrong sides together now. And like I did before, I'll be rolling the seams. So I'll clip the top edge. We're gonna top stitch that top edge and then we will baste around all three edges. All right, let's go ahead and top stitch that top straight edge and base down all three sides. Be careful not to hit that snap. It is kind of close. So I will be using a um, zipper foot to get past that edge. All right, so this is all done. We've top stitched the top straight edge and then we have basted all three edges of the other exterior panel. Now what we're gonna do is you're gonna grab the exterior panel with the center snap. I'm just gonna set it aside for now, but we do need that in a moment. Grab your exterior tops, and you wanna make sure that you mark the centers on the short edges, okay? So go ahead and do that on both of these sides. And you're gonna grab one of those and grab your outer slip pocket backings, which is pattern piece O. You're just gonna grab one of those for right now. And what you're gonna do is lay your top edge right side down at that top straight edge. We're gonna clip them together so they should be right sides together. 
we're going to go to the machine and top stitch at that top straight edge at the seam allowance given in the pattern. All right, so now we've got the top edge sewn at the seam allowance given in the pattern. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this up and we are going to make sure that the seam is behind the lining piece. We're going to fold down that lining piece. I'm going to finger press. You can go to the iron if you'd like and press this, but that seam should be behind your lining. Okay. We're going to go ahead and top stitch along that edge right here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right. That looks really good. So we've got those two pieces sewn together and top stitched here. This is where you're going to grab that exterior piece that we've made before with that center magnetic snap. And we're going to lay this so that it is wrong side down and right side up. Okay. So your exterior should be facing up your centers should match up at the bottom. Also those center marks that you previously made on the short edges of each side should line up with the top edge of this panel. Okay. Mine is lining up. It's also lining up with my center marks on the bottom. If it's not lining up, it's okay. We can always match up the edges here on those short sides with this top edge. And then we could always trim down at the bottom if needed. So don't worry about that. Go ahead and clip your edges together. And what we're going to do is we're going to baste the sides and the bottom all together. Okay. Don't close up this top. Okay. Cause this is a pocket. So you want to go ahead and baste in place all three edges. All right. Okay. So this is what it should look like right now. Okay. So you've got a pocket here and then you have your exterior with a female magnetic snap snap in the center. This looks really good. I love the color of this and then the waterproof canvas, the way this feels is so nice. So if you're interested, I got it from Wonder Ground Fabrics. I think it's called weathered waterproof canvas. I love it. Um, this is great. All right. So go ahead and grab your scissors. And what we're going to do is we're going to trim those overhanging edges here. Okay. So go ahead and trim those off very carefully. Okay. So right now we're going to set this piece to the side. Okay. You're going to go ahead and grab your flap again. Make sure that the top edge has those centers marked. Okay. And then you want to go ahead and grab your other exterior top piece and then your outer slip pocket backing piece. Okay. I've already marked the centers on my short edges here, but now you want to go ahead and mark the centers on the top and bottom edges. So all four sides of this piece should have center markings on it. Okay. So we're going to grab our flap. We're going to take our flap and I'm going to place it. So it's right sides up where the magnetic snap is at that top edge here. Okay. So this should be right side up. Okay. We're going to take our flap and we're going to place this right on top of this exterior top. Okay. And this should be centered right on top of this. So your exterior top is right side up your flap with the magnetic snap on that top straight edge is going to, I guess it's the bottom. I don't know if this is the top or the bottom, but this straight edge, we're going to line this up to meet that center mark clip into place. Okay. So this is what it should look like right now. Okay. We are going to go ahead and baste that into place. Okay. Okay. So now that is sewn into place. Okay. We're going to take our other outer slip pocket lining backing and place it. So it's right sides down. Okay. Your flap is sandwiched in between your lining and this top piece. 
Okay, so we're going to go ahead and clip that top edge into place. We're going to go to the machine and sew this down at the seam allowance given in the pattern. All right, so this is stitched together. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our lining and press it away from the flap. The seam should be going towards the lining, so it's underneath your lining here. We are going to go to the machine and top stitch this at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. If you'd like to press this, you can do that if you'd like. So let's go to the machine and top stitch this. You want to make sure your lining um, is pressed away from the flap. You will be top stitching on all of um, your seams from the flap and then that top, um, that top piece, okay? So just like this, we're going to top stitch along the lining side. All right, so this is what you should have right now. Looks pretty good. This is still wrinkled. I'll probably end up ironing it at the end. Now you'll go ahead and grab that pattern piece for the exterior where your magnetic snap is at that top edge. Okay, so it's on your lining side and you're going to place this right on top so that the magnets, the magnets attach here and you want to line up those bottom center pieces right there where the center marks are. And if your lining is overhanging like mine is, don't worry about that. We can trim that down. So you'll want to go ahead and clip all those edges together. And we are going to go ahead and baste all three sides. Don't close this up, of course. You want to leave that open because it's your magnetic pocket. So we're only basting along those three edges here at the bottom and then you'll trim off all the excess of your lining if you have any like I do. Okay. All right. So this piece is all done. Okay. We're going to set this to the side. We've got our cool little magnetic pocket here. That looks really pretty. And then we're going to set this to the side for now. I'm grabbing my gusset pieces right now. My key leash and then my D-ring connectors. I have marked the center of my key leash and also the center of the D-ring connector and placed double-sided tape on there. I will go ahead and sew these together. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna remove the paper on the D-ring connector. And I'm going to fold that long straight edge to meet the center mark that I've made previously. And I am going to do the same thing on the other side. So this is what it should look like. Okay, so do that on the other D-ring connector. We are going to sew these pieces on the long edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to remove the paper from that double-sided tape on that key leash. Do the same thing to where I'm taking the long edges and meeting the line that we have made before. We are going to take this to the machine and do the same thing as the D-ring connectors and sew at an eighth of an inch on those long edges here. While I'm there, I'm going to take my gusset pieces. Okay, and I'm going to take the longer edges and place them right sides together. We're going to sew those edges at the seam allowance given in the pattern. And then what we're going to do is we're going to open this up and you're going to open those seams and top stitch on each side of the seam. Okay. At an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead and sew the gusset together at the bottom and then our long edges of the key leash and our D-ring connectors. All right, so now that these pieces are top stitch on the long raw, on the long edges, not the raw edges, but the long edges, you wanna grab all of your hardware. So your triangle rings or D-rings, rectangle rings, whatever you're using, and then your half inch swivel hook. And I'm gonna go ahead and thread that swivel hook right on through. You wanna make sure that the folded edges 
are coming together. So I'm going to go ahead and clip that together. So wrong sides together, okay? Those folded edges should be together. I'm going to go ahead and take the raw edges that are folded together and place it right through so that that metal bar is against those edges. If you want to, you can make a mark that's about a half an inch from that raw edge and fold it. I'm just going to kind of eyeball this and place those raw edges together. I'm going to take some double sided tape and place it right on those edges. just like that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for the other D ring connector. All right. So now that this is threaded, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a clip and just to clip those together. I've got that one clipped together. I'm going to set this to the side for a moment. We have our gusset sewn together at the bottom and then top stitch. You want to grab a ruler. We're going to make some markings. Um, go ahead and take those short sides and make your center markings. All right, so you're going to grab your ruler, mark one inch down from that center mark. Okay. I'm going to draw, oops, I'm going to draw a line for that one center inch mark all the way across because what we're doing is we're going to take the top edge of our D-ring from the fabric and we're going to match up that one inch line, okay, right there. So I'm going to match up the one inch line that I've made with that raw edge, not the raw edge, but the folded edge of your fabric here. So I'm going to take this and fold this back and make sure that my one inch mark lines up perfectly with the whole side of the folded edge of my D-ring tab. Okay. And that's why we have the double sided tape here to help placement. So go ahead and remove your paper. And place that right where your line has been made. So your line should be from edge to edge here. All right. So now what you can do is go to the machine and you can sew an X or a box or put a rivet here instead. I will sew through this first and I might put a rivet. I'm not sure yet. Um, yeah, I may put a rivet in there. So, but I will go ahead and just sew a box really quick. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and repeat that for the other side of the gusset. All right. So now we have our connectors sewn on here. That looks pretty good. I added the rivets. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to grab the piece with the flap. You're going to have your other piece as well. We're going to attach the gusset to our exterior pieces. All right, so I've got this right side up and we're going to place it so that it's right side down and you still hopefully should have that center mark down at the bottom. If you don't go ahead and um, make your center mark and this should hopefully line up at the center and it does. So it looks pretty good. So we're going to take this and place them right sides together and match up your center marks and we're going to clip along the bottom edge. I like to put a couple of clips down at the bottom straight edge. And to help you with the curve, you could make little snips into the gusset. Don't make them into the panel here. Only make them small into the gusset about an eighth of an inch. Don't make them too wide. 
I'm going to go ahead and just match up the ends up here. I'm going to take my triangle ring and I'm just going to put it down out of the way. But I'm going to go ahead and match up those top edges and then begin clipping around all the edges. Okay, so this is all together, right sides together, clipped all together. So now I'm gonna to go to the machine and I'm going to stitch this into place at the, at the seam allowance given in the pattern. Just be really careful and I'm gonna be using a screwdriver around the curves just to make sure I flatten as I go, okay? So just be mindful of that. If you have a stiletto you like to use, use that. Whatever you, whatever you like to use on the curves. So let's go ahead and get that gusset sewn on. All right, so I've got that sewn together. I forgot to mention when you're sewing this, make sure you keep your flap up out of the way. Make sure it's not folded down on either side, okay? Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna trim my seam allowance on here. Before you do that, make sure you like the results. Um, that way you don't have to go back and fix anything. Mine's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim mine and then we're gonna go ahead and take our other exterior side and we're gonna go ahead and place it so that it's right sides together and match up those midpoints and start clipping around and we're gonna sew it together just like we did on the other side. All right, so I've snipped into my gusset so that my curves will fit into place. Everything is clipped together, it's right sides together. So I'm gonna to go to the machine and sew around this edge at the seam allowance given in the pattern. Again, I'll be using my screwdriver to help with the curves and make sure everything stays flat. All right, let's go get that sewn together. Okay, so that is sewn together. I went ahead and trimmed down that seam allowance. It's looking pretty good. There's our inside here, that exterior, and then our other magnetic pocket. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and set this portion to the side and we're going to begin the interior. So now we're going to go ahead and grab our small slip pocket, which is pattern piece M. Keep in mind that two sides are longer than the other. So this is a rectangle. We're going to match up our shortest sides so that they're right sides together. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to clip the top with just a couple of um, clips. We are going to sew the short edges together, not the top edge. We're gonna sew these short edges together at the seam allowance given in the pattern. So these sides only. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it so it's right sides out and then we're going to flatten our pocket and baste our raw edge closed. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just trim my seam allowances here. I do like to do the edges at an angle. That's just personal preference. Let's go ahead and place this so it's right sides out. Gently poke out the corners. I'm just gonna use a little clip here to poke those out. All right, so let's go to the machine and we're going to baste this raw edge. Uh, we wanna baste them closed. All right, we've got that. So go ahead and grab your pattern piece I, which is a small slip pocket binding. What we're gonna do is grab a ruler. We're gonna make a center mark right in the center and then grab some double-sided tape and go ahead and place that on that mark. And then we're gonna fold the raw edges right over this raw edge here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm also gonna be placing a label. All right, there's my woven label. I got them from Warmino. She does make custom woven labels if you are interested. 
All right, so we've got our raw edge right here, okay? And I've got my drawn line in the center of our uh, small slip pocket binding. And I've got double-sided tape. I've already removed the paper. I'm also gonna be placing my woven label right underneath um, the binding here. So I'm going to place my binding so that it's wrong side up and I'm gonna place this right on top and I'm not gonna meet the line. I'm gonna place it just below that line. Okay, and then I'm gonna place this right over here. I'm gonna place the raw edge right where my stitches are so that they line up and I'm gonna fold this in half. I might have to go ahead and place my woven label after I begin folding this down. Okay, here we go. I'm trying to get this as straight as I can. Fold that down. I'm gonna have to clip this because my double-sided tape doesn't want to stay in place. And get this as straight as possible and you wanna make sure that your edges meet and what we're gonna do is we're going to stitch down along that raw edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, so let's go ahead to the machine and sew that down. First, I'm just gonna put some clips in here. You want to make sure that you're catching the other side as well, your back side here. You could always do a quarter of an inch just to be sure, um, but I'm gonna do mine at an eighth of an inch right along this raw edge here. All right, so this is all done. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to the side for a moment. I'm gonna grab our key leash here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and grab the large lining top. This is pattern piece E. You just have one of those. And then our large lining piece, which is K. So what we're gonna do is, right now I'm looking at the top. You have, this pattern piece is kinda cut at an angle on the sides. The longest edge is the top edge, okay? You're gonna grab a ruler and there's a measurement in the pattern that you're gonna make that's gonna be on the top right edge. You're gonna go ahead and make that mark. This is where we're gonna attach the key leash. I'm gonna make a line. I'm gonna take my key leash and I'm going to place it right, this is my line right here. I'm gonna place it right on the inside of that line. Um, I am gonna have mine, it says you can put it right at the edge and then we'll base this down. So I'll go ahead and clip that together. So we'll go to the machine and we'll, we will base down the key leash. But I'm gonna go ahead and sew down um, the lining top while in there. So you wanna make sure that you place your lining top right side down on that top edge. This should fit on there perfectly. So I will go ahead and clip that together um, while I'm at the table. So I'm gonna baste my key leash on and then this will go right side down. I will clip into place and then I'm gonna go ahead and sew this together at the seam allowance given in the pattern, okay? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is flip this so that the uh, seam allowance is behind the lining. So this is gonna be sticking up kind of funny. Okay, your key leash here. That's okay. Just fold it so that it's down. We're gonna sew over that. Whenever we top stitch this edge. All right, so I finger press this. You can go to the iron if you would like, but I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch this on the lining side and you will be top stitching over your key leash. All right, let's go ahead to the machine and top stitch that down. All right, so we have this completed. This has been top stitched with our key leash here down. Um, it's kind of storming outside right now. I don't know if you can hear that, but hopefully you can't hear all that thunder. All right, so now you're gonna grab that slip pocket that you have made. 
what I did was I folded this in half and I went ahead and drew a line straight down and I used an air erasing marker which is disappearing very quickly. Um, so what I'm doing is there are measurements in the pattern to place this and you'll want to go ahead and look at that for your measurements. Um, I've already got my center piece here and then my center line here marked in place. You probably can't see that because like I said, it's disappearing pretty fast. So what I'm going to do is I've got this here. I'm going to fold the bottom up to meet the bottom of my slip pocket and just place a couple of these clips here. That way I don't have to um, use tape or anything and I don't lose the place of, um, or the placement of my pocket. I'm going to go ahead and start sewing from the right side and then come over down the bottom. And then once I get to that center mark, I'm going to go up and I'm going to pivot here and go back down. I will be double stitching a couple of times on all of these ends here, just to make sure that this is secure because you'll be using this pocket quite a bit. And then I'll come back down, pivot and come down the bottom and back up that side okay so go ahead and attach your slip pocket well that looks pretty good all right those are nice little pockets that looks really nice all right so let's move on to the small lining i believe so go ahead and set this to the side all right so this is where you're going to grab your small lining piece there's only one cut for that. We've got the same thing happening over here with our lining where there's angles here on the side. So the longest edge is the top edge, okay? And that's what's facing me right now. And then we're gonna need pattern piece F, which is your small lining top, okay? So right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that small lining top here and we're gonna place it right sides down on that top edge. We are gonna go ahead and clip those together. And then we're gonna to go to the, whoops, we are gonna go, I'm just dropping all my clips today. We're gonna to go to the machine and we're gonna sew this down at the seam allowance that's given in the pattern. Our small lining top is now sewn on all right, so this is what we've got. You can take this to an iron if you would like and just um, flatten this out if you'd like to. I'm just finger pressing. I'm gonna go to the machine and we're gonna top stitch along the lining side. So I've got that seam going toward the lining. So it is behind our lining here. So we're gonna go to the machine and like I said, just top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance along the lining side. Okay, so now this has been sewn together. Now what we're gonna do is grab our hidden pocket, or excuse me, our hidden zipper pocket, which is pattern piece P. I'm to have one piece I'm gonna take and we're gonna lay this so that they're right sides together. Okay, make sure that you find the center. I already have marks here for my center line so that I can line this up perfectly. Same thing with over here, which you probably cannot see. I can see them but I do like to make lines with an air racing marker where my midpoints are, just so I can make sure that this is lining up perfectly and it's looking pretty good. I've already drawn, there are measurements in the pattern you'll wanna to refer to for this, okay? I've already drawn my um, the box for the zipper, okay? So I'm gonna to go to the machine, I'm gonna sew. I don't know if you can see my box, it's disappearing um, pretty quickly. So I need to go to the machine and sew this down. So I'm gonna sew on top of my hidden zipper pocket along that rectangle that I have drawn. So the measurements for the rectangle is in your um, instructions. So make sure you refer to that. So go to your machine um, I'm gonna tape this down as well when I get to the machine so that this doesn't move while I'm sewing this down. So sew around that box, okay? And when I get to the corners of my boxes, I am going to 
take my stitches and make them really small, like two millimeter. This will help the puckering at the corners. All right, so let's go ahead and get that box sewn on. And again, it's right sides together, okay? Okay, so I've sewn all around that box. Okay, you probably cannot see that, um, but right now what I'm gonna do is kind of cut a hole in the center, so I'm folding this in half. And I'm going to snip right in the center and I've got some very sharp scissors and I'm gonna go ahead and cut down that center line. And I'm gonna go to the very tip of the triangle and then we are going to cut those angles. We're gonna go as close as you can to the stitches without snipping your stitches. But the closer you can get to the stitches, the better because that prevents the puckering. And to be honest, I always have puckering when I do pockets like this. Um, if you have any tips or tricks, please comment down below and let me know. I would love to know. I recently have found a love for overlays. I really love the way they look and you don't have to worry about puckering. So I'm gonna do my very best here. I've also been pretty bad about snipping into my stitches and that's never fun. So the closer you can get to the stitches without cutting them, the better this will be. So I will see how this goes. That's all done on both sides. So now I'm gonna go ahead and flip this so that this pocket is on the other side of my lining piece here. You could go to the iron and iron this out if you'd like. Well, that's not too bad. That might be one of the best ones I've done. There's a little, little bit of puckering, but it's not too bad. All right, so you're gonna go ahead and take your small zipper. You wanna make sure that you have your zipper pull on before you go any further. Um, I like to make sure that my zipper pull is on the right side. So whenever I open it, it's gonna go to the left. Well, I'm looking at it upside down. So when I'm closing mine, it's gonna pull close to the left and then it's gonna open when pulled to the right. So I wanna make sure that I have orientation correct. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this around. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna center this right on top. You can get some double-sided tape if you'd like. So what you're gonna do is go to your machine and you're gonna top stitch that zipper in on all four of your edges. All right, that is all done, it's not too bad. Now we're gonna go ahead and flip this so this is right sides down. You're gonna go ahead and grab your other hidden pocket, your other hidden zipper pocket and place it right on top. Match up those edges. We're gonna clip the left and right side and the top. We are not gonna be stitching the bottom of this uh, closed. We're gonna keep it open. So we're only stitching the sides, left and right and the top only and leave bottom open. I like to um, leave a couple of clips down here that are together, just reminding me, hey, don't, do not sew there. Um, that really helps me. I have done that many times. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and clip the sides and go ahead and stitch all over the lining pieces. All right, so that is sewn together. When I did the sewing, or when I sewed this down, what I did was I had it on my bed like this and I sewed on the side and moved this completely out of the way, okay? So that is how I put that pocket together and I'll go ahead and trim these edges of the zipper and cinch those as well. So make sure you do that. All right, so that is all complete now. So we're gonna keep this out. You're gonna grab 
the zipper pocket, which is pattern piece N. And right now we are only going to be doing one at a time. So I'm just going to grab one and set the other one to the side. And you're going to grab a ruler and a marking tool and your zipper. Now you're going to grab that ruler and you're going to mark one inch on that edge. Okay. So go ahead and mark a little tick mark one inch away from that edge. Okay. You probably cannot see my mark, but I can see the mark. What we're going to do now is take this and open it. We are going to make sure that our zipper is at a 90 degree fold here, right where that mark is. Okay. So you can pinch this. I like to kind of, it's hard to explain this, but pinching it and bringing it up. So that fold is right at the zipper. Okay. And I meant to get my little stapler. Okay. So I've got this little stapler. Um, it has little small staples in it. I am going to staple this down and then that's what I've got right there. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm just going to pinch where that mark is and bring that fold. When you pinch it, it creates a fold. You bring that fold up to meet the zipper teeth. Okay. So it looks like this. And then I'm going to take my stapler and staple that down. All right. And that's enough until I get to the machine and sew this down. Okay. So this is what it should look like like so and you can go and hand sew this together if you like to or if you like to go to the machine and sew it down or if you like to cut it and burn the singes together whatever works for you go ahead and do that but this is what we've got right now okay this is where we're going to take the zipper apart okay this is the part that can be pretty confusing. So I'm going to do my very best to explain this as best I can according to the instructions. So we've got this right side up right now. Okay. And we've got the one with our zipper pocket. Okay. We have these two separated now. I am going to grab, I'm going to turn this so it's to the side. I'm grabbing the piece. It's the left side of the zipper. Okay. So we want it to go like this. So the right side up, our zipper is right side up and it's going to be where the curve is to the right side. Okay. So it's the left side of the zipper. And again, I have my zipper really long. Okay. So you're going to grab a marking tool and your ruler and we're going to make some marks on the top here. Okay. Okay. There are going to be two marks that you're going to make on the left side and the right side of your um, lining piece. You'll need to pay close attention to those marks on the left and the right sides. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and make my marks real quick. I've got my marks here. I'm taking the left side of my zipper and I'm going to place the curve to meet where I just made that mark on that right side. I'm going to flip this so I can see this over here. So I want my zipper teeth to match up 
with that line I just made on the right side of my lining piece. I am going to start clipping that top edge here. Okay. I will also trim down this long piece of my zipper after I've basted everything into place. I prefer to do it that way. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. It's totally up to you. You could also use double-sided tape here if you would like. So I am clipping down my zipper all the way until I get to the other line that we have made on the left side. And what's going to happen is I'm going to place that clip right where I have that mark on that left side. And you're going to curve your zipper down a little. Okay. We're going to just curve this down and I'm going to clip it to where the lining piece meets that top, the top piece. Okay. So I'm just folding it down, curving it down. It doesn't have to be precise down here. You just want to have this clipped down so it's out of the way. Okay, so it looks like this. Okay, and what we're going to do is you're going to base this down from this mark that you made all the way to the end of the zipper teeth. Basting that down right now, okay? So let's go ahead and... Um, base this down. There is a seam allowance for the base. It's not an eighth of an inch. I believe it is actually a quarter inch. Um, so just keep that in mind as well. So let's go ahead and base that down. All right. So this is what we've got. It's been sewn down, base it into place. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to set this to the side for a moment. We're going to grab those lining pieces. I'm just going to grab one of them and you're going to make some marks. The marks are listed in the pattern. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and make my marks real quick at the top left and the top right. Okay. So this is actually going to be right sides together. So you got the line that you've marked here on the right side and you're going to place this down so that they're right sides together and the zipper teeth lines up with that line that you've previously made on that right side. I'm going to go ahead and clip this together. Again, you can use some tape if you would like. So we're going to go ahead and clip along the top edge. We're going to do the same thing that we did on the other panel with the zipper. So we are stopping right where that mark is. That's where we're going to put the needle down. Right there where that mark is. And just curve that zipper down and out of the way. So grab a clip and just clip that down. So this is what we've got here. Okay. We're going to go ahead and base this down just like we did on the other okay, one. Okay, so that is now basted down. All right, let's go ahead and set this to the side. Now we've got our other lining piece. We are going to place this wrong side up. You're going to grab your ruler and we're going to make some measurements. So we need to pay attention to our measurements here. On the right side, we're going to have a rectangle. It's going to be half an inch wide and seven eighths seven eighths tall. Okay. So seven eighths tall and a half inch wide. So go ahead and draw that rectangle. Okay. I don't know if you can see that, but there's my rectangle on the right side. On the left top corner, it's going to be a seven eighths by seven eighths. Okay, seven eighths by seven eighths square. Okay, so we have a square on the left side and a rectangle on the right side, or a square on the left side and a rectangle on the right side. I'm going to go ahead and mark the seam allowance here, okay?
draw your seam allowance line. Oops. And then I move the ruler as I was marking. Let me try that again. Okay, so this is what this should look like on the back of your lining piece. I know it's hard to see. I'm so sorry, but um, there we go. We're going to take the zipper pocket with the zipper that's wrong side down. And you're going to take this other zipper pocket and place it right side down. What we're going to do, let me see if I can move you in a little bit. We're moving the zipper out of the way. Okay. We are going to start sewing on this box. I'm going to start here and start at this line. And then we're going to come up. Okay. And then that's where we're going to start our seam allowance, right at the line that we made for the seam allowance. You do not, you want to be careful with your zipper. You should not be sewing over the zipper right here. So we're going to sew this bottom line and come up to the seam allowance here and we're going to go all the way across. Okay. And then we're going to come over and sew. Once we get here, come back down and then over. Okay. So we just want to make sure that we are not getting the edge of our zipper in. We want to push this out of the way. Okay. I hope. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to go ahead and clip this together at the top and then we will go and sew this, sew this together. Measurements here should place your zipper out of the way. So it should be just fine. Don't worry about it. We are sewing over the zipper. You just don't want to sew this tail here down. Okay. So let's go ahead and sew that together. So this is what we have. Okay. Now what we're going to do is take some scissors and we are going to trim the corners and cut diagonally into the corners. We don't want to cut into the stitching. Okay. So we'll go ahead and cut like so. I'm actually going to cut into them. So I've got the square and then I kind of cut right into that corner right there. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing over here. All right. Cut into that corner. Don't cut your stitches. All right. So now up here at the corner, I'm just going to cut at an angle to reduce some of that bulk. There we go. Do that on the same, that same thing on the other side. Okay. So this is what we have right now, what it should look like. Okay. We're going to flip this so it's right sides out and wrong sides together. That looks all right. Let's do that same thing to the other side. Go ahead and grab just a little clip and push into that little corner up there. I could go get my turning tool, but I don't want to accidentally puncture this. So I'm just gently using a hairpin here. Okay. That's not too bad. Looks better this time than I did with the other one. I think my other one, I also used Theratex, which is a thicker material. I just don't recommend that for this pattern. Okay. All right. So that actually looks pretty good. So what we're going to do now, it looks like we are going to align all of the sides and top stitch all of our sides and then top stitch or we're going to top stitch up here at the zipper and then sew on all of our sides here. All right.
All right, so now that is sewn together, what we're gonna do is grab our other piece that we already attached the other zipper on, and you want to place these together. Now, these are not going to line up perfectly. We're going to make like a 3D effect here, and we're gonna um, align the edges and then the bottom, and we're gonna baste all three edges, okay? And we're gonna leave this top open. Be careful not to include these in your stitching. They need to be out, okay? Okay, so now that is done. We are gonna go ahead and take our other lining pocket, not the lining pocket, but our other lining piece, and we're gonna lay this so that it's right sides down. Now this is going to be bigger, okay? We're gonna just clip all our edges, except for the top, And we're gonna have it uh, be in a 3D effect as well. So when we're clipping this together, it's gonna be like this, open. All right, so match up your seams the best you can. Clip all those sides together. So we are just doing the sides only. So it should look like this. It's kind of open. There's a big hole there. Okay, we're going to put the bottom in at some point. Okay, so your zipper should still be out of the way. Okay, so let's go ahead and sew our sides at the seam allowance given at the pattern. Don't close up the bottom or the top or anything like that. Just the sides only. All right, so now you can go ahead and trim down your seam allowance. Okay, so go ahead and grab your line bottom, which is pattern piece Q. You're going to mark the center on all four sides. You can go ahead and also mark the seam allowance on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to place these. There's this, it's open. You wanna make sure to have your centers marked on here as well. Mine are already marked. We're gonna place this so the bottom is right sides down. And again, you're gonna match up that center mark, which I have to find my center, which is right. I got it. All right. Okay, there we go. We're gonna clip this together. And what we're gonna do is sew this down at the seam allowance given in the pattern, which is what we just marked on the bottom panel. Let's put this down. We're only gonna sew the straight edge. This will be easier to put this together. So you'll go ahead and sew from that your seam allowance to the other seam allowance. All right, so let's go ahead and start matching up the seams on all um, on the other edges, okay? So we'll go ahead and clip them together and start matching everything up. All right, and just match up that other center mark and go ahead and start clipping around. Okay, so it was easier for me to sew this one side at a time. All right, you guys, so if you've been following along, you've noticed that I placed my lining bottom on the top. That was my cue to stop because I was exhausted. So if you are anything like me when you're tired and you are sewing exhausted, you make a lot of mistakes. That is exactly what I did. I spent about 45 minutes taking all of the stitches out of the base here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and repeat what I just did on the bottom, which is where it should be. You guys, <laughs> so sorry about that. So I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera since I already did it on camera, basically. And just don't do what I did. All right, let me go ahead and get the bottom on this, on the bottom of the lining, not the top. Here we go. All right, you guys. I just seem to be making all kinds of mistakes today during this video. 
But if you've been following me for a while, you know that I do that all the time. When you sew on the bottom, on the lining, we're only sewing three edges. We're not going to sew four because this is where we're going to pull stuff through down the bottom. Okay, so make sure you only do three sides and I'll make a note in a video when I started this so that you're aware we're only doing three sides. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this so that it's right side out and then you're going to grab your exterior and we are going to attach the bag for final construction. All right, so this is what we've got. The opening here, it's looking really good though. Um, all right, so you're gonna keep the exterior of your bag right side out. So it should be exterior, um, it should be wrong side out. Okay, and then your lining is going to be right side out. Okay. All right, so open this up. You don't want it in this pocket. Okay, you want it in this main opening here. And it says in the pattern that your pockets, your slip pockets should face the flap. If you don't want it that way, it's fine. You could do it the opposite if you'd like, but I'm gonna follow the instructions and place it inside. All right, tuck your zippers in. We don't wanna sew over those on accident, so make sure you tuck those in inside of the pocket and get them out of the way. The flap, you want to go ahead and tuck your flap inside, okay? Tuck it in. It's fine if it gets smushed. We could always go back and iron it, no big deal. We don't wanna sew over that as well, okay? This is gonna be a little tricky. It's gonna feel a little awkward as well, okay? But it's doable. I'm just taking the seam on the other side and opening this up and meeting the center, clipping that together. So that lining is going to go over where that flap is. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and clip the top edge and get that lining and exterior and clip together, okay? All right, so this is clipped together. This is going to look and maybe feel like it's not right, um, but it's fine. It's fine, I've got my centers marked. Um, it just looks like my centers of my lining just aren't lining up. Um, I had that same problem in my first one. So, so I've been fidgeting with this thing and I just, it looks like it's fine. It's centered on both sides. So I'm just going to roll with it and sew it together and just see what happens. All right. So let's go ahead and sew the top together. Make sure zippers and hardware, um, your hardware should be down on the side, so make sure that's out of the way. Zippers should be inside, your flap should be inside, okay? So let's go ahead and, as long as everything is inside of the bag, let's go ahead and sew that top together. All right, this is done. Let's go ahead and pull everything through the lining bottom very carefully. Everything lined up really nicely. Um, so now we can tuck your zippers in. And what we're gonna do now is top stitch all around the perimeter up here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you move that hardware out of the way. Make sure you don't stitch over the zipper. Tuck that down. I've gotta clean up some threads I've got hanging here. And then after that, we'll close everything up and add our zipper and um, the zipper in, and then we'll be all done. But I love how this looks. This is great. 
All right, guys, let's go ahead and top stitch that. Make sure you also leave the flap out of the way, okay? Don't sew that down. Here we go. All right, the perimeter has been top stitched. We are gonna go ahead and close our bottom. Okay, and then also we're gonna close um, the pocket. All right, so we are done closing everything up. Everything fits real nice in here. Um, now all that's left to do is attach our zipper and then also attach the zipper end. I've got my mini screwdrivers here and then this little screw, you don't wanna lose that little guy. They are so little. I'm gonna go ahead and attach my zipper on here. All right, well that came out pretty perfectly. Look at that, that's great. All right, so now you need to decide what length you would like this to be. I don't really want mine to be super long. She recommends about three inches or so. I'm just gonna eyeball this. All right, and then make sure you singe the edge. All right, and I like to, whoops, fold in that zipper so it's kind of like V-shaped, like so. And take my zipper end and place that inside as far as it will go. And then turn it around so you're looking at the back. Grab your little screwdriver. And this little screw, be careful. And then place it in the hole there and screw that in. You could put glue in the end cap if you'd like. Well, we are all done with the Diana. How stinking cute. That looks great. Now I just need to add my strap which is gonna be this metal strap here. Wow, look at that. That's really pretty. I will leave a link down below on where I got this metal strap. All right, guys, I made a lot of mistakes in this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that I helped you out with this. If so, give it a like. Um, if you could, please subscribe to my channel. I would appreciate it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today's video. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Bye-bye.